Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I noticed at the tail end of last episode that I never actually credited us for completion of the MR4 flight. So we actually need to do that right now. We need to toss in our credit there. Perfect. And we'll just quick save just in case. I did this actually after the episode and then apparently I didn't save that. So cool. We did it now. Perfect. We're going to hop into the VAB. And the question then is, what do we need to do next? Well, looking at the list, we need to get through Vostok 2, which is placing the second Soviet Kerbal in orbit. And they completed 17 orbits, but we're probably not going to quite do that one. Now, we've done a little bit of a refinement to the Vostok launcher here. My main question about this at this point is what kind of spaghetti bending does this thing have? There's probably some. Also, do we have fuel lines yet? No, we don't. Okay, there's definitely more fuel here, and that's actually a lot more thrust to weight than I expected to see. Probably because we upgraded these to T-30 Reliance. So if we do this all at once, this is going to be 2.33. We might actually want to just lift off just with these and then ditch them and then fly with this. I have no idea what the, those aerodynamics are going to look like. This is only 60, second to, 60 seconds of burn in these outer stages. So let's run a quick aerodynamic sim and see what this is going to feel like navigating through the upper atmosphere without those fins. This is going to be a simulation. We have to revert this. The question is, after the detachment of the side tanks, how does this go? We're going to be going from fixed engines to gimbaled engines, but we're going to be losing our control surfaces. So without gimbals here, how does this feel at first? And once these detach, how is it with just this gimbal? Those are the questions we need to answer. Throttle up, SAS on, and let's simulate. So off we go. We've got quite a lot of pep off of the pad. No doubt about that. And let's just try a relatively standard gravity turn. Oh, I appear to have some sort of aerodynamic overlay on. I don't know what button I press to turn on an aerodynamic overlay. But that's interesting. This is going okay. Oh, hello, that's a tumble. We got it under control-ish. Until then. Yeah, we see there's a big amount of bending here. Okay. Good to know. So obviously this is basically out of control at this point. Now, what did I press to turn this on? I don't know what the hotkey is for aerodynamic overlay. I will be right back. We're we I said we were going to revert that, and that is definitely true. Now, I want to try it going straight up. We're going to go back to launch and try it like that, but I'm going to look up real quick what the hotkey is for that aerodynamic overlay. I'd like to turn that off. One second. Okay, oddly enough, just when I reverted, it turned off, but I looked it up. Apparently, it's F12. Yes, it is F12. I don't know why it turned on, and I don't know why it turned off when we reverted it, but okay, sure. Now, I want to test this real quick, just going straight up purely straight up and then we ditch this we, we ditch the side tanks here and I want to try doing a very extreme at that point gravity turn so that's going to look like we just go up until we've burnt off all of this and then we just flip directly to the horizon this is not necessarily a good launch profile in fact it is objectively a bad launch profile I'm doing this to test out aerodynamic field that's the goal oh wow we're just we're tumbling. Okay. So we just naturally tumble over here. Good to know. So that is likely an indication that our thrust to weight is too high. That's likely what that is. So let's revert that back again. And I want to get through this first stage here. That would be awfully nice. But let's turn down our thrust limiter little bit here and let's let's have our thrust to weight be just a little bit lower i'm pretty sure that we've got too high of a thrust to weight right now and that's what's causing that particular tumble 
So let's see here. We're going to crank down our thrust limiter to like 60%. Even that's a little high. Like 50% thrust? Even that's a little high. That's 1.7 still. Wow. Okay. Are all of... Oh, they, these aren't all the same. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. Let's take this back to the VAB. We definitely don't want to have that sort of offset thrust. Okay, so we're going to turn this down to like 80%. That's more like it. Beautiful. So let's put that out on the pad and see how it feels going straight up aerodynamically. And the real question here is, do we hit that tumble? Which I suspect was caused due to hitting a thicker portion of the atmosphere going too quickly. And as a follow-up, how does it feel after we detach our side tanks. So let's go. I'm not touching anything for the time being. I'm putting, I'm inputting no controls here. Obviously this is not how we're gonna do a real flight. This is just testing out the aerodynamics and shaking out aerodynamic issues. Cool. So we can see our thrust to weight is creeping upwards, which is of course fully expected. We're kind of creeping over into a retrograde direction, which isn't ideal. But for now, it's fine. I want to keep an eye on our apoapsis as well. How high does just this put us? Oh, hello, that's a tumble. I did not input any anything for that. Okay, just stick to prograde for now. Yeah, we're not really able to get sufficient control here. This is what I was concerned about with a lack of gimbling on these engines. Okay, so that's fine. We know then that we have a pretty major issue in that first stage. And that issue does not have to do with thrust. I'm going to ditch the Reliance. We're going to put in swivels. The issue is entirely to do with insufficient gimbling. As in, there is no gimbling in that stage. So this is 1.55 as is. This is a little longer burn, but this is a lot less efficient of an engine. We do have to step back on that efficiency. And with these, with, with this particular setup, we should be much better set up. We should be absolutely fine here, in theory. I'm not foreseeing any issues with this particular launch aerodynamic we'll see what we've got if we still tumble here i will be shocked and in fact i'm just going to turn us over ever so slightly here and then i'm going to not lock prograde yet i'm going to take us virtually straight up it's a little bit more of a quote-unquote real ascent profile it's not a great one but it's a little bit more real And we'll see how this ends up going. We're going to lock to prograde eventually. Actually, we're kind of not, though. Not with this ascent profile. We're just going to be parked here on the 90 degree heading, and we're just going to go up as much as we can. We have an additional nine seconds of burn time in this tank, switching over to the swivel, but I, I do think it's a less efficient engine. The real question is what happens when these detach? We're not super high up in the atmosphere yet, and that's the main concern here. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, so off they go, and now we're trying a stress test. Okay, so that's uncontrollable. That's good to know. I'm not surprised at this altitude, to be clear. I'm very not surprised. We want to flip around there, naturally. That's definitely non-ideal. And we're just going to make our way on over. At this point, it's actually rather controllable, which is remarkable. So we could just park, like, you know, here-ish. Now, we've burned a lot of our fuel in that tumble. No doubt about that. That's definitely a problem. But we can push our apoapsis up a decent amount here. 
And we're getting nearly entirely horizontal speed at this point. We should actually be able to make orbit with this, even with that tumble. And this isn't the ascent profile that I would look to get, to be clear. That was an aerodynamic stress test, and I learned the information that we needed to know, which is that it's around 35 to 40 kilometers that this becomes aerodynamically stable. And that's very good to know. We definitely did need to know that one. We're pushing up this apoapsis still. What we're really interested in right now is getting, well, we're, we're still 40 seconds away. Yeah, this is pushing up. Time is going up here. So this is actually fine. Yeah, this is actually just fine. Even with the tumble, which cost us quite a lot, actually. So this is pretty overkilled at this point. That's pretty safe to say. Beautiful. So at this point, we should just be at the horizon. But we can revert this because we now know that this is good. So we can go back to the launch and we can do a real launch here. So this will be putting up another Kerbal into orbit. Our only other pilot right now is Valentina and Valentina is going to wait because the first female astronaut has not yet been put into orbit. But we could definitely hire a new Kerbanaut here. Jeb has all of the status that he's going to get from here. So maybe we should, actually. Let's revert this back to launch. No, not to launch. I wanted to put this in VAB. Okay. Let's revert this back to the VAB, and I want to hire another Kerbal, I think. Because we need to put another Kerbal into space. That much is very, very clear. We've been overworking Jeb. He's been running all of the flights for both NASA and the Soviet Union. And that's a bit of a problem. So we're going to go back to vehicle assembly and we're going to hire another Kerbal. So let's hop on out of here for now. And let's get this real flight going. Now, in reality, they orbited 17 times. We're probably not going to orbit that many times. And it also bears noting that this is a Vostok flight, and we're going to have to bail out and not recover the science. So there's that. We are going to want a pilot here, and this is going to have to be specifically a male pilot. Well, that's awkward. Both of the available pilots are female. Mmm. It has to be a pilot. So... In that case, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to send Jeb. That is unfortunate. Well, we tried. That's all we can say is we tried. The, uh, the game isn't quite as sexist as the world was back then. So we're definitely going to launch here. And at this point, Jeb just needs to get into orbit. So we're going to be pretty cautious with this. No doubt about that. We're going to be lifting this off the pad. This is now a real non-simulated launch. If we revert it, it's considered a loss of vehicle. So, up we go. Once again, I want to get a very, very small amount of horizontal movement here. And we'll just park right here for the time being. Cool. I just want to make sure we're going the correct direction, right? So that's it for now. We're going to go largely straight up with these side boosters. But we're getting some horizontal speed. So that's absolutely fine. And then we're going to be more cautious with our uh, movement over. No doubt about that. What is our orbital prograde? Yeah, that's a ways away. Cool. We've got about 25 seconds of burn left in our side tanks here. We're getting some decent speed going. And our current apoapsis is 20 kilometers. We definitely need to get a little bit higher here. 25. 30. 2. 1. 0. Cool. So for now, I'm just going to lock to prograde. And once our apoapsis hits 50, we are going to start heading over. But we're going to have to be kind of careful with this. 
we are starting to get up into the much more lenient areas of the atmosphere, though. It looks like we're going to be fine to just head to the horizon at this point. Cool. So that's fine. We don't need a lot more verticality. We'll angle for a 100 kilometer apoapsis. And we'll just burn here until we reach 100 kilometers. That's absolutely fine. We do see our time to apoapsis dropping right now, so we definitely do need to be burning at this point. But we've got plenty of delta V in here to get this thing into orbit. So that is absolutely magnificent. We've got 70 kilometer apoapsis as of now so that's officially in space cool but we want to push that up further we need a lot of horizontal speed no doubt about that i'm just adjusting our heading ever so slightly there we go we're just going to continue to push up the apoapsis that's going to start going up exponentially but we need to get a bunch of horizontal speed first so that's going to be the first goal here. But we've got enough Delta V, honestly, in this stage to enter orbit at this point. So that'll be fine. We're going to just push on up. And I guess we could grab a mystery goo observation here. We don't have all of this. We'll have to transmit that back. Which we can do now that we're in space. So we'll transmit that. We'll transmit all. Beautiful. Watching our apoapsis here is 83 kilometers, 90 kilometers, and there's 101. Phenomenal. We'll lock to prograde for now, and we are, of course, once we hit here, going to circularize this. Perfect. As I said, we have enough in our main booster stage to make it into orbit at this point. So that's phenomenal. This is definitely getting refined. We're going to head on over to the maneuver note. Now, keep in mind, we have no solar panels on this thing. The power we have is the power we have, although there is an alternator on this swivel engine. So we can generate some additional power off of that, but otherwise, we have what we have. So we're going to be doing our circularization burn here in about four minutes. I'm just lining up for that, and let's warp on towards that. Phenomenal. This is feeling a lot more controlled than the last orbital flight. No doubt about that. We've got the aerodynamics and the flight profile a lot more ironed out. There's really no doubt about that one. So we've got about 20 seconds left on this burn. Three, two, one, zero, mark. Phenomenal. Getting that last little bit of circularization going there. There we go. That'll do. Putting us into a nice orbit there. Inclination 0 0.1 degrees. Eccentricity 0 0.001. I like it. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. Beautiful. Good flying, Jeb. We're going to spin this around to retrograde, and I'm just going to... I've, I've noted this a bunch of times at this point, but I'm just going to note again. In reality, Vostok 2 orbited the Earth 17 times at this point. So, that's the thing. We're not going to orbit Kerbin 17 times. That's that's not going to be a thing. That's a lot. I mean, I suppose we could, but some of these get ridiculous. Like, uh, let's see. I know there's... Yeah, Vostok 5 completed 82 orbits. Yeah, we're not going to go to that level. I'll just comment on how much they achieved in terms of orbits at this point orbital duration was considered one of the big achievements so 17 orbits were achieved here we are going to do one orbit so we're just going to warp on around just imagine this 17 more times <laughs> we've got 277 meters per second here in our in our big tank so we've got lots of delta v left we're going to get aligned to retrograde here and we're going to drop our periapsis to probably around 30 kilometers we'll be absolutely fine so let's get that dropped on down 
There we go. That'll do. 30 kilometer apoapsis. And we've still got lots of fuel here. We still have 1,200 meters per second in this thing. Lots of fuel. Do we want to utilize it? I mean, we could utilize it to recover the capsule here. But that's not what they did. If we if we recover this capsule, we do not get credit for our mission, which is sad. So instead, we're just going to warp on forward. And actually, we should ditch this component as of now. Okay. And we should activate this engine. There we go. Cool. And we'll re-enter like this. If we need to use this engine to burn, then we can definitely do that. Oh, there's still two T-100s here. We should have replaced that with a T-200. That's slightly cheaper. But that's fine. We'll warp on forward, and away goes that. We never actually used this component here. We should replace this swivel, actually, with a pug, now that I think about it. That's something that we should do. So a couple of refinements to the Vostok capsule once we are back in the VAB. That'll be fine. We're, of course, in Atmo right now, and downward we go. And remember, there's no parachutes on this. There's no recovery plan. We could recover this using this engine. This engine is not very realistic. <laughs> but we could recover this using this engine. We're not going to because that is not going to count if we do. So Jeb is going to have to bail out at about 7 kilometers and parachute himself down to the ground. We do want to be landing on land. So we might actually want to do a breaking burn here. And I'm going to do exactly that. We're going to burn off a bunch of our horizontal speed because I want to make sure that we do a land landing. That is what the Soviets targeted, after all. So that'll be absolutely fine. There's all of that burnt off there. Cool. So at this point, really, we should decouple this decoupler and ditch everything in here. Goodbye. And we're going to be coming down with just our re-entry module at this point. Cool. That should mean that we're guaranteed a land landing, and that does appear to be the case. Beautiful. So we're slowing down here, but we, of course, need to continue to fall quite a lot. And we bail at 7 kilometers. Beautiful. Our speed dropping precipitously. Radar altitude, please. 16, 15. I guess we can grab a crew report. Not like we're going to be able to recover this. Because KSP doesn't really support this type of vehicular re-entry very well. 9 kilometers up. 8 kilometers up. And... 7 kilometers up. We're going to let go. And of course we're going to deploy our chute. And down we fall. Fantastic. I guess we can grab our EVA report. I really don't think we can collect it, though. Because I don't think it collects directly off of Kerbals. Which is, of course, rather sad. So we're just falling here. We're about five kilometers above the surface. And we're falling substantially slower already than the Vostok 2 capsule. That is going to impact relatively soon. It's about a kilometer below us. What's our radar altitude? Okay, about a full kilometer lower, so that's good. This will be impacting in about a kilometer and a half of it falling. It'll be impacting right about... 9-ish. Ish. There it goes. Cool. So the capsule, of course, is destroyed. We fully expect that. And down we come. Any moment now, our chute will deploy. There we go. That was quite a spike of G-forces. 
<laughs> no doubt about that one. So really, for now, we're just diving to the ground. And we're going to want to bleed off some of this speed, for sure. So this is kind of an uphill area over here. We're just trying to convert our altitude into speed right now. There we go. And then we'll try to reduce our speed here in a moment. Cool. More speed. There we go. Converting the vertical speed into horizontal speed. And then, of course, we're going to want to pull way, way up to convert the horizontal speed into not really any speed at all. Something kind of like this. Cool. So that slowed us down a decent amount. That slowed us down a decent amount. Continuing to slow down here. We're a little high up still, of course. Beautiful. Continuing to slow down a bit. We're down to 10 meters per second. And there we go. That was a nice landing. Good job, Jebediah. He could grab the EVA report, but he uh, actually can't. He's already got an EVA report. He could plant a flag, but there's not really a point. So let's recover Jeb, and that is, of course, the Vostok 2 flight, at this point, complete. Great, I'll mark that off on the list, and next is going to be the MA-6 flight. So we're going to have to design the Atlas rocket, which is the orbital rocket for the Mercury program. Wonderful. That'll be absolutely great. We'll get that done soon enough. The Americans need to get their first orbital space flight, after all. So we're going to hop in here. I do want to make a couple of really quick changes to the Vostok rocket. So we're going to add ourselves our 200,000 funding. There we go. And let's hop into the VAB. I want to make a couple of changes to that upper stage. Is this loading? There we go. Now it is. So those changes that I want to make is as follows. I want to ditch the big engine and replace it with a little engine. That is not that. This. I want to ditch that, and I want to ditch these two T-100 tanks and replace that with a single T-200 tank, like so. And then we would replace this with a pug. Perfect. That'll be a lot more efficient, and it'll get us a decent amount further as well. We had lots of Delta V, but that'll be more efficient. It is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we are going to make the Atlas rocket for the Mercury Atlas launches. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.